lot of shit going on in my life, and I'm starting to think that Wendy's mother put a hex on me. What's going on, Heavy Hitters? Welcome over to Heavy Hitterville, y'all. If this is your first time, welcome. Thank you so much for coming through. If you're one of my hitters, welcome back. Good to see you, good people. It's been a while since I've done a pre-recorded uh, review, but it's time to re rant and review these hoes. So y'all come on in. Let's have this heavy conversation. Alrighty, y'all. We're about to review season eight, episode three of Real Housewives of Potomac. Heaven is a place in Potomac. Potomac not giving what it need to give. <laughs> Baby, because Married to Medicine is shitting all over these other franchises. Real Housewives of Potomac. Okay, we start with the montage of... Now, I haven't reviewed the last two episodes, but y'all know what's been going on. We got a new girl named Ineka. She is somehow gotten pulled into the Pretty Odd Bandit group. She's coming in being very thirsty. We got the girls all back. Robin has had to spend the past couple episodes trying to explain herself to get out of the situation. I'm sure that was one of the first things when they negotiated her contract. They had to look her up. We gonna need to see more wine and you're gonna have to address this. Now, mind you, Robin thinks she's slick so she's doing the bare minimal and she and Juan are trying to do damage control. Giselle is Giselle. Candace is walking around here thinking she's a star. <laughs> Mia is getting her just due for thinking that she's a boss. Unfortunately, the children and Dr. G are collateral damage from her thinking she is what she is, but she clearly is not. Karen is still being Karen, the grand dame. Um, Wendy is still being Wendy. It is what it is. Let's go ahead and get to the episode three. So we begin with the montage of what happened over the last couple of episodes. We, we go back to this conversation between Wendy and Ashley about this Osu situation with Ineka. Um, the girls are back out at the tent talking to Robin. She's so delusional. It's at, pause me, please. Robin is committed to being delusional. So we should all just not give a damn. If she don't give a damn, although it makes for great TV and it makes for us to be able to release our attentions on how dumb she is, if she don't care, we need to stop caring. Giselle and Karen talk because, um, remember Giselle said that Karen owes Robin an apology. And then Karen reminds her, well, girl, don't forget I said she owes me one as well. They step to the side to have the conversation. Ashley comes back out with Wendy. Karen and Robin are now inside chatting about this information. We get a montage of their issues. Wendy's new show is brought up by Ashley. I don't know why Wendy feel compelled to explain what she's doing amongst women that she does not like. But maybe she felt it was a flex. Let me tell you what I'm getting ready to do because my intellect super y'all. Of course, Mia is making faces, slurping her cup. So Mia goes ahead and, and digs in deep with a little, little bit of shade. What? No, I'm sorry. It wasn't even little. little. It was blatant, <laughs> blatant slight. Shh. Pause it, please. Bitch, Mia ain't. <laughs> Pause it, please. Wendy ate her up. <laughs> we should got to talk about intellect uh, vibrating high and then Mia is slow. Mia is slow. Mia, like, Mia, how do you have a problem with the person that you caused the issue with? Like, let me lean in and have this heavy conversation. Mia, you threw a drink on this woman. You lied on this woman. You tried to assault her with your purse. You iced her out because you already know that they over there don't like the lady. Y'all made her the issue last season. Like, she did something. Mia, you started all that. That is absolutely crazy that I digress. The ladies are back at the table still having a conversation. Karen and Robin are still inside. We're getting flashes between outside and inside. They go ahead and agree that they're going to stop talking about rumors and just speak facts. Karen has the audacity to ask Robin, is her marriage real? And is it uh, legitimate or is it open or um, traditional? Karen, from what they're saying about you, that should be the last thing that you should be concerned about. Wendy is delivering the tongue lashing of hell to Mia outside because... She's had a couple of weeks, a couple of months before they started filming from last season to really get her thoughts together. She's telling her that she's slow, it's a little short bus. She vibrates down, so she would not understand. Her show would probably go above her head. Ashley giggles, it'd probably go over my head too. It would. If it ain't about trapping a man, it probably would, Ashley. <laughs> not Ashley, Lord Ashley. Well, I will say one thing though. Mia looks good in that bob though, with that Fashion Nova dress. My homegirl got that dress from either Sheen or Fashion Nova. But Mia looks good in that little chop bang with the bob, with the blonde bob. She looks good in that. Ineka and Robin are bonding at the bar. They realize that they're close to one another. And she says, let's get together for a cocky. I guess she meant cocktail. So, you know, they're going to get together later for a cocktail and a drink. What's so funny is, <laughs> funny looking ass Deborah tries to sneak into the scene. She walks up and now the camera's facing her as she's trying to slender and get in the scene the camera moves away from her Deborah give it up 
pause me, please. Deborah. Not this season, mama. No, let's. And you probably got cut up for that fight y'all had. So they totally wiped you out of this season, I'm hoping. Deborah. <laughs> pause me, please. Deborah, the cartoon character from Sesame Street. Funny licking ass. While sitting around the ladies, <laughs> Wendy distinctly only invites Ashley to her son's first communion. Good one, Jen. I love it, Wendy. Give them what they give you. Bitch, if they petty, you be, you be pettier. All caps. We move over to Candace. Candace is, again, she's a star. I want to be a star. <laughs> oh, Candace, you're delusional. She's talking about her nine city tour. <laughs> you made me want to ride it, drive it, whatever that stupid ass song says. Girl, how dare you try to shade Drew? Drew sounds better than you. She might not have the marketability that you have or the drive, you know? Mm. Candace is talking about her nine city tour because she's a star. They go through an additional montage. We get over to Ron and Robin faking a bonding moment. Man, let me lean in and have this heavy conversation. This is the most we've seen one in eight seasons. Yes, he doesn't work. However, it's not because he isn't working. It's because, one, he's probably billing. <laughs> Every time I got to work with your miserable ass, I'm going to bill you for my services. And two, this is the main money coming in the house. So I got to do whatever we got to do to make sure you keep this chick robbing. So let's go play. Let me lift you and play around this dead, eaten up ass snake that's on the ground. Pause it, please, and let me lean in for this heavy conversation. If one and Robin didn't look like homeboys just walking on the campus, joking around with one another let that sink in that yeah, shit didn't look real at all Giselle is out shopping with her older daughter Grace Grace is getting ready to graduate and go off to school she's looking for clothes for the party cause she's saying I want tanks, I want midriffs, I want bodysuits and Giselle's like do you gotta go to the party and she's like mom I know you went out Giselle lets us know she was the life of the party I bet you were pretty beautiful light skin pretty hair Pretty eyes. Oh, I bet the boys loved you. We now get back to Wendy. Happy Eddie and the children. They are having breakfast. Dear Wendy, let me lean in and have this heavy conversation with you, baby. Teach those boys to eat with their mouths closed. If there's food in your mouth, wipe it off. Don't talk with your mouth full. Those are just common courtesies and etiquette that parents should be teaching children. Not saying that you're not a great parent. You know, and those are children. But girl, it starts young. It starts young. Take my advice. They're having the conversation about the communion and she wants to practice. She has the children go get dressed. They get dressed, they do it. Eddie's playing a pastor. They go through there, okay, cute. We get over to Mia. Karen comes to visit Mia in their little chateau. <laughs> Girl, your house is smaller than mine. <laughs> Girl, what the hell? Boy, how the mighty have fallen. I'm a boss. I make 400000 a year. Ooh, child, how the mighty have fallen. Dr. G, excuse me, not Dr. G. <laughs> Cross some of shows. G comes to get the kids because, you know, at this time they have to pause having a nanny. <laughs> pause my ass, girl. Girl, welcome to being regular like us. You made a choice for a man that you thought had it who now does not. Girl, we're welcome to being regular like us. And at, 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 at all honesty, you ain't nowhere near regular as some of us are. Girl, you still got that, I'm sure, six-figure check, probably mid-six-figure check, I would hope, with the foolishness that you do. And hopefully Greg got some disability or something. G or UJ, whatever G, he got some disability coming or something help around the household. They have a conversation. Karen brings up the fact that um, Wendy invited Ashley only in front of the ladies. Um, of course, Karen was already invited. And Mia takes this opportunity to talk about Karen, uh, talk about Wendy calling her slow and how it's uh, affecting her son and because her son has IEP and she has to deal with that and she pours into him. And she doesn't want anyone to use that word because her son is, you know, having, I don't even know the word to use, so I'm not gonna use it because somehow her son got pulled into it. Mia, she called you slow. And God forbid me, and granted if there's any issues, anyone that you've born or bore, it might be hereditary. I mean, I'm just going to go on and say it. Sorry. Karen checks Mia real fast. Now, girl, wait. That conversation was between you and her. She didn't know nothing about your son, so don't you even try to flip that. 
Candace and Wendy meet for dinner. Candace was in LA for two shows. They chat about Ashley's housewarming and we get introduced to Kiana. Not sure why she's actually there. Maybe she's gonna be shown, shown more later. She just happens to own a business a couple of um, stores down. So she comes over to have lunch with them. She invites Kiana to the communion. Great, they talk about rumors. They talk about all this stuff. It's kind of a filler episode. Karen meets Ashley to shop for Wendy's, um, the boys first communion. They talk about the clothing. Um, she bring up Michael's lawsuit, Ashley and her bunions. Let's see Ashley's bunions. Ashley admits she was being messy when she talked to Ineka and Wendy. Says she's going to apologize. Ashley, you got to stop that shit. Ashley, you got to stop. Like, for real, though. At some point, because you don't want to discuss your, your divorce. Pause it, please. What divorce? Because you don't want to discuss whatever's going on with you and Michael. This, this... This running with the narrative of just being messy, like, that shit gotta stop, bro. Like, you gotta stop. Wendy, Carter and Cruz, the boys, First Communion. We see a snippet of the First Communion and we move over to the brunch. We see Wendy's mother, who is always doing too much. But, um, you know, it's just, but to be fair, your, your child was assaulted, so of course you're gonna take a couple of digs. The ladies start to arrive, and for some reason, Ashley has her boobs out at the young boy's first communion. They have a very beautiful, loving moment between Happy Eddie and his son, where he says, you know, I'm just so proud of you. You were a little nervous, but, you know, just the two of them, I'm sure they just caught it. You know, it wasn't intentional. I love that. I love to see a, a son and a father interacting and a man showing compassion and love towards his child. You know, to be honest, my dad was a man's man, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't, re I can't recall him pouring that type of love into me. I know he loved me because he provided for me. I know he loves me, Lord God forbid, my father's still alive. I, well, I know my father loves me, right? Without saying too much. I know he loves me um, when he was in his prime. Uh, but my father was a man's man who grew up in the country. All he knew was to take care of his fam family. So I love to see that. Um, but if it wasn't sports, my father and I just didn't have that connection. But that's neither here nor there. I, I'll say that for another story or story time. Wendy starts the conversation about the elephant in the room, and that being Candace and Ashley. Candace lets the group know that she could be cordial around Ashley. God, why do I keep calling that girl Ashley? Ashley. Ashley says, I received that. And she says something else. Not saying that I agree I could be cordial around you. Ashley, why are you so mad at Candace? And y'all know I'm not a Candace fan. The people that have been around, I'm not a Candace fan. But Ashley, you have equally done some real fucked up stuff. Karen asks the ladies, have they heard of pickleball? She invites all the ladies and their partners and their loved ones out to play pickleball. Ashley clears up with uh, Wendy what she said about Ineka. All the ladies are like, wait, what? Wendy needs additional clarity. She says that she misrepresented what Ineka said. So Wendy thanks her for being honest. Girl, Wendy, stop playing with this woman. Ineka meets with Robin for lunch. Pause me, please. Ineka, I don't like you. You're so busy trying to fit in and not, in my opinion, hold your heritage that it's just blatant that you want to be this persona. I'll leave it at that. They have a conversation. Robin looks very disheveled and stressed. Hair is all misplaced and kind of stringy. And oh, girl, Robin, that man sending you through hell. <laughs> Pause me, please. Robin, that man is running you through it. Girl, you look a mess. Robin asks Ineka who else she knows besides Ashley because Ashley has introduced us as Ineka as her friend. She goes straight to, well, I know Wendy. I've seen her around. Da, da, da. She just starts, she had diarrhea of the mouth. And I don't care what no, I don't care what nobody say. You give me fan of the show. So you know they have differences. So you don't just started running down some of the most problematic things that could be discussed to someone you don't even know. Traditions, spirituality, religion, just all these ridiculous things about her mother. Her mother put a hex on you. And then Robin said, maybe she put one on me too. No, Robin, girl, you jinxed yourself when you stopped living in reality. You got to watch that. I can't even go into full detail, but I can just tell that this conversation is leading to something that we do not want to go down. We've already had this colorism conversation. Y'all brought in someone pretty much who has the same background as Wendy. But yet y'all have found a way to divide them. That that's 
crazy. That is crazy to me. We get a lot of back and forth between the scenes. Wendy and Eddie are speaking at the brunch. Ineka and Robert are still talking about Wendy. We go back to the brunch. Wendy is praying. Back to Ineka and Robin. She's talking about what her mother told somebody about, if you don't know me, look me up. Find out who I am. Bitch, Google me. <laughs> I'll get you and your little dog, too. Back to the mother. Now the mother is praying at the brunch. The very same mother that Ineka and Robin are talking about. Ineka and Robin start talking about the culture. Robin yeah, says... Yeah. We go back over to Ineka and Robin. And again, they are having this very dark conversation about culture and Wendy's mother and hexes and spells and religion and, re and spirituality. It's just really, really ugly child. And that was how the conversation and the episode ended. And then they go into a review of the next episode. Child, I don't like... Potomac, y'all not giving it like y'all thought you like. I thought I like y'all said you were. So that's why the re review is going to be short. Follow me on all social media, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter. Have a hitter media. Be sure New to like... Text message. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And until the next time, y'all be easy. Peace.